So the majority of this video is going to be showing how I made what I'm calling the cradles, which is what's going to raise and, and lower the tabletop for this. Um, the first thing I had to decide what to do was how to mount um, the brackets that come with the linear actuator. And that was just a matter of, these are taller because I wanted as much of the actuator still in the 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 vertical parts of the table to make it as stable as possible so these were these were quite long um, uh, large ones you could get shorter ones that will raise the table up as much as you want and you probably won't have to cut into the sides but like i said i wanted the longest ones as possible so you'll see once this is all said and done about half of the cradle still in the the base of the table which makes it extremely sturdy so this was kind of what i settled on for for how it was going to sit and that meant removing a large amount of material from this top part of the trestle so this is the part where the eighth inch i left for the tenon was going to get really thin i didn't think when i was laying this out and this is kind of the problem with engineering as you go i didn't think that the the cradle i was making was going to end up being as wide as it is so i didn't think i'd have to remove as much material as i am removing um, this is something that it ended up working out. It didn't compromise the tabletop. If I was doing it again, I'd probably make the, the eighth inch a little bit thicker. But for the plans, I'm not going to change it because even in theory, um, I think it will work if it's thicker. This is something where since it's mechanical, I won't have tested it out. I'm not building another table. And even though in theory it works, it might not work in practice. But I am pointing out at this point that if you want to make the shoulders on these mortises a little bit thicker, that is something it, that you can, you can play around with. But basically all I did was cut a series of curves. Um, I could remove that material, and then I have this big opening for the cradle to go in. Now, like I said, because I got longer actuators, um, I had to remove some material from the base as well. But that ended up working out nicely because then I have a nice nesting spot to attach the, the bottom mount for this. So all I did was mark where it was going to go, and in order to make this as clean as possible, I used my mortising machine to remove this material. It was very simple. I made it the exact same size as the mounting bracket, and then I'm making it the exact same depth as the mounting bracket as well. So you'll see that will slide right into place, and there's screw holes already in those mount mounting brackets, so that was how I was going to attach it. I could go to the mortising machine and um, have the, the table set up, and just remove all of this material. I'm going as, as deep as the thickness of the bracket, obviously, and then I'll have a nice, a nice cutout for this. Now, originally I hadn't fully designed the table at this point, so I thought I might have to make a cover for these, but I end up um, putting a bottom runner on there to, to stabilize the table which covers this hole so you you never see it um, part of the design of this was i designed it because i don't know how long these lunar actuators are going to last i designed it so that they can be easily removed and replaced and the the table can be serviced as well so that is part of the design i didn't want to bury any of the components where you'd never be able to get to them if something breaks with this if some of the electronics fail um, all of the parts are easily replaceable so that was that was part of building as well now the pin that goes through here that will receive a cotter pin to hold the actuator to the bracket was a little bit wider so all i did was chisel out a little bit of material you can make this entire groove bigger but like i said i really wanted it to sit in there nicely so it can't twist and torque once it's in place so i opted to just chisel out a little bit of material you can see how that was going to set in place so once I had all those grooves made, I could I could clamp this in place and I could start working out the dimensions for the cradle. You can see I have a screw holding the actuator on the bottom and then I have it clamped to the top. So that's basically where I'm at at this point. My opening is four inches and I'll have plans for this eventually, but I think it was about two and a half inches deep. And like I said, I'm, the design for this was I was basically making a modified iframe, I-beam sort of system. Um, 
for strength as well as, as, as keeping this true as it raises and lowers. There's basically two contact points to this. The groove, the whole thing will ride in, but it also sits in the front. So that eliminates side to side movement as well as front to back movement. Now I had some uh, walnut veneer ply in the shop and at this point I knew the tabletop was going to have a strip of walnut in it. So to kind of keep the continuity of the whole piece I decided to do a strip of walnut around the whole table. Um, the problem with this was this walnut, I was working with scrap pieces, this is from a project that I made almost three years ago, so they weren't the exact dimensions I wanted, but they were close enough to make this work. If you were built, for the plans, I'm keeping all the dimensions the same, because like I said earlier, I don't want to modify anything without being able to test it on the table because it moves. Um, if you want to, you could see mine's about a half inch too short to meet the top. If you want to modify the plans and make your pieces exact, um, it's easy enough to do. Just cut that uh, a half inch taller. Um, for the sides of this, I was trying to keep the grain continuous, but for the sides of this, I only had long enough pieces so the grain runs horizontally. Um, I would have preferred it to run vertically, but this part of the cradle you'll only see when the table's raised, so um, I didn't let that I didn't want to go out and buy a whole new piece of plywood. This stuff's really expensive in order to see to see vertical grain on those side parts, especially since two of them will be facing the wall. You'll never see them. And then this is cutting the, the ply for the front portion, which is smaller because I wanted to leave the gearbox exposed. So before I go about um, cutting the dados in this, I put edge banding on the side, because even though I'm going to be cutting this, it's much easier to edge band this with a full quarter inch piece of walnut edge banding than it is to cut up the edge banding and, and veneer it with a small piece. I went through and tested some dados, and as you could see, I want this a hair inset. There's about a sixteenth inch overhang, because I don't want these two verticals on the side to interact with the sides of the, the, the trestle at all. And then I could just go through and cut my, my backside dados. So this plywood is about a true three quarters of an inch, so I have a three quarter inch dado stack in there with the sacrificial fence for cutting rabbits, and I could just cut rabbits on both sides of these pieces. So this will make a little more sense when I have it in place. This is the back side of the cradle, so it's almost exactly the perfect size to fit in the back. I leave a little bit of space just to account for seasonal movement. The plywood won't be an issue, but those big beans at the table might move a little bit in the summertime. And you can see I leave, it's a little shy of, of the front because I don't want it to hit the, the sides at all. And that is basically uh, the back side with the, the two sides in place, and then the linear actuator is going to sit in between this. So for the front, you can see I marked center, and I have to take out quite a bit of material on the sides, and that is because I don't want a big, I want this to be inset, I didn't want a big thick piece of walnut sitting on the inside of the frame. And then um, I marked where it's going to come up because like I said the front isn't going to be as tall because you have to leave space for the gearbox of the, the actuator. So I'm going to start off towards the center and then remove a bunch of material on the sides and then this whole piece will, will fit together. Um, part of the problem with removing this much material was the linear actuator ended up taking up a lot more space than I thought it would so you'll see I'll have to make some, some adjustments a little bit later, but basically I'm just removing two rather large rabbits on both sides of these front pieces um, in order to 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 hide the, the stem of the linear actuator. You do see it obviously when the tables raise. I had originally thought about putting uh, a nice piece of a smaller wooden box inside of this so when it raised it hid the stem, but it, it was just too, you would have to make the legs probably six inches thick in order to be able to do that. So I just tested the originals on there to make sure it was gonna fit and square, and then I can move the fence over and, and remove the material from the sides. Um, I'm making this these clips a lot slower on these videos now because especially with them coming with plans, in the plans I, I 
urge people to watch the videos because I do make incremental changes as I go. I don't think building off plans, cutting all your pieces and expecting it to fit together is ever going to work. So um, with that in mind, that's why I've, I've kind of slowed down these videos a lot and there's a lot more parts to them for people that are trying to build this stuff at home. I feel like it's easier to follow along when the clips aren't sped up as, as much as I used to have them. So now you can see this in place, it probably makes a little more sense. I have that back side and then the two sides. You could see why I didn't want them rubbing against the sides of the trestle. And then now the front is going to fit and cover that stem. At this point, my sides were a little too thick and the front part was also a little too thick. I only wanted about a 16th of an inch space um, in that front there. So this is part of engineering as you go. I decided to remove a little bit more material so that this would be inset more. The problem with that is then it was going to hit the actuator, so you'll see how I adjust for that as well. Um, this was a nice project where it was fun to build. I do like problem solving. I do like making things that move, and I do like working with mechanical elements. And it was also one of those projects where, in theory, my design ended up working really well, which is truthfully not always the case so so this table's been in been working quite well for a couple weeks now so you can see I'm just I raised the dado stack I'm removing a little bit more material so that flange isn't as pronounced on the outside and then I could go back and test it in place and both of these craters cradles were the exact same size which was a testament to spending time making the mortise and tenons the same size um, if you don't make everything square at this point you're going to have to make these cradles two different sizes so like I said now that this is inset more in the in the frame I had to remove a little bit of material from the center otherwise the actuator was going to hit the center of the ply so this is a pretty specialized piece piece of lumber at this point this front really just ties everything together as well as acts as the access point for the front to keep the cradle from rocking back and forth so removing a bunch of material is not really an issue and then with this in place you can see what i mean so now the actuator has clearance in the front and I cut more of the sides so they're not as thick of a flange which like I said I didn't want to see this part I wanted it at pretty low profile once that was in place you can see that my sides were a little too thick I tested my mark on both pieces to make sure I could cut all my sides to the same thickness and I'm removing a little less than three-eighths of an inch material just so that, like I keep saying, that front part is as close to the front edge of that trestle as possible. I didn't cut right up to my line. Once again, I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch gap there just to account for potential seasonal movement in the summertime. This is going into a climate controlled home, which most people have those now, so it's not as much of an issue before that was common standard. And then now you could see this in place and those cuts probably make a little bit more sense. I have this, I have um, the profile of this front piece is about a quarter of an inch so it sits nice and close to the front edge of that trestle. I have a very, very small gap so that nothing binds or rides against anything else, which I didn't want to do. If these legs grow a little bit in the summertime, I won't have to worry about binding. And the last thing I'm going to do before I glue these together is I'm putting lap joints on these side pieces because I'm going to put an apron that connects these two cradles together so they rise and lower as one unit. And I want to do that with laps because laps are one of the, the strongest joints you can have. So I'm just marking where that's going to go. Now these side pieces, I had the same issue where I didn't have plywood that was long enough. So you can see in that clip, I raised the sides to the top so that they're going to be flush with the top. On the bottom, they're not flush, which you'll see when I, when I glue it together. Um, once again, this is the plywood I had. I wasn't going to go out and buy new plywood. It doesn't affect the function of the table at all. But if you're following along with the plans and you want to make everything flush, which is a little bit easier 
easier to glue up if it's flush, you can make those changes. And then I made the mark for the, the thickness of how much material I had to remove. And then once again, common for the shop, I'm gonna cut a series of curse on the radial arm saw. I raise the blade up, I have a stop set so they're all the same. And then I could just uh, remove the rest of that material with a hammer, pretty simple work. Um, now on the bottom, there's a little rubber flange on the linear actuator, so it was hitting the, the inside of this front plate. So all I did was make an oversized mark and I removed about a quarter of an inch material off the, off the inside. So like I said, I was building this as I went, so it's just easier to remove some of this material and that's taking it, taking it off there. The back side, I mean, this is the back side, not the front. And you'll see, see that you could see why I made that clearance on the back side. So that fits in there nicely now. I have the clearance on the front. You could see they're, they only stick out by about 16th of an inch. And then these are the cradles together. You can see how the sides, like I said, they're not long enough to reach the bottom, but I wanted them to be flush with the top. If you're making this yourself, you could cut those flywood, plywood flanges longer. Um, in the plans, I, I might actually change that because that's nothing that's going to affect the how the table works. And then at this point, I'm going to glue these cradles together because they needed to be glued together before I started cutting the grooves for the metal piece that's going to ride up and down the trestle legs. At this point, the trestles are not glued together because it's going to be easier to cut the connecting groove in those if they are separate pieces. But it was important at this point to get this, this cradle glued up. It's just a series of glue. The nice thing about all these rabbits and dados are they're time consuming to do, but when you multiply your gluing surface area like I am here, it's just going to make these super strong pieces. So there is the tops and the bottoms. I clamp everything together. And the reason I made this out of plywood is because plywood is dimensionally stable. If you make all these components out of solid wood, I've seen people um, nestle solid wood inside solid wood for raising and lower these tables. It's almost a guarantee down the line. The wood is going to gain and lose moisture and shrink and you're gonna have lots of issues.